The NFL where the draft just over two months away and in Field Yates first mock draft of the season the former Heisman Trophy winner USC quarterback Caleb Williams projected to be taken by the Bears with the top pick now overall he's got five QBs going in the first round you take a look there one two three at the top of the draft. He's got the Patriots resetting with Drake May, the Commanders second picking the Heisman, current Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, look at, speaking of, sir, yeah, yeah. sir, Commander Tim, look, our I want the truth. He's been a season ticket holder for a couple of decades now. And we can't. I went into the wrong line of work. I look good in that uniform. Maybe that should have been where I where I went, man. I love Commander Tim. That is Come tremendous. On. All right, it's old. Never gets Mike old. Mike T, we got to start with uh, those Commanders. Do you need to think? You think they need to go all in? Go get Caleb Williams. You think? I, I don't. I think they stand pat where they are. You can get Drake May. You know, someone would take Jaden Daniels. And I really like Caleb Williams. I think he has a chance to be really good. Two things he's got to clean up, the turnovers and the sacks. He was sacked 83 times. And offensive tackles have been taught since Pop Warner pushed the pass rushers past the pocket. Caleb Williams has a really bad habit of trying to escape backwards. And yep. he's running to a bunch of sacks. That can be fixed. Um, Look, they have some really good young players, and Tim knows that, you know, from Terry McLaurin and some of their other young skill players. And Drake May didn't have a lot to work with. I think you draft Drake May there. He has all the intangibles, and that's the way I would go. I wouldn't pay that massive premium for Caleb Williams. Legs, look at that. I said it. You season ticket holder for, like, a couple of decades now. Do you want Washington to trade up and go get Caleb Williams? I don't, and here's why. Because of the mixed bag of reviews I get with all the NFL people that I talk to. And I think that's scary to me for a guy that's supposed to be surefire number one. I feel like I don't hear as much of that with Drake May or even Jaden Daniels, but I hear a lot of that with Caleb Williams. Like, the, the, the reviews are all over the place, and that kind of scares me that you're going to give up something additional when you might be able to just pick the guy, too, that might be the better fit for your franchise. So that's scary. I, I'm almost like in Washington – let it be like a Greg Oden, Kevin Durant situation, right? Yeah. Where being number two is good, right? So you don't have a choice in the matter. It falls into your lap or like a Brandon Ingram. See, like ben a C.J. Stroud situation. situation. There you go. That's what I'm saying. So I, I'm, I think I'm comfortable with that rather than give something up potentially and make the wrong pick and you gave up additional assets. He's special, though. I've done a number of his games in Bart. You look at him, the arm talent, the way he moves in the pocket, the throws he's made. He is special. Should they go up and go get him? No, I wouldn't. I mean, you, it's, this is the thing. Like, somebody's going to be a bust, and you don't know who it's going to be. I mean, I, I think the last time where we had three hits, I think what it was um, maybe Eli, Rivers, and I forget who. Roethlisberger. And Roethlisberger, right? I don't, I don't know if this is what we're looking at. And you talk about giving up additional assets for that. I think you just – you know, Jaden Daniels may be the best one, but we know environment matters. So you, are you prepared to be able to handle these young guys? If you bring in Caleb Williams, are you going to make him be the savior again? We watched what happened with Mitchell Trubisky. We watched what happened uh, with Justin Fields. Are you going to bring in a competent backup like a Jacoby Brissett and say, hey, we're going to bring this guy along and we're not going to put him out there till we know that he's ready? You know, that's the pressure when you talk about being number one. If you lose, people, you know, start clamoring for him. Sometimes if you fall, sometimes you win because, you know, Lamar and, and, and Josh Allen, you know, landed on their feet. I don't think you have to overthink it. Sam Howell's right there. He's still a young, developing player. Like, if I'm Washington, I keep Sam Howell, I draft Drake May, and I, I roll from there. Just Gr all North Carolina. Carolina. Just, just UNC. It's Tar Heels, <laughs> right? Like, that's the new plan in Washington. Look, I, I think if they could do it, then they should. I, I think there's – if your evaluation shows you that Caleb Williams is the, is the transformational player uh, and, and you don't feel the same way about Drake May or Jaden Daniels, then you have to make that effort. But for that reason, I, I don't think the pick's going to end up being for sale. <laughs> right? I, I think right. Chicago probably just sits there and takes him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to your point, you don't hear as much about Drake May uh, or Jaden Daniels in terms of that. But I think if either one of those were thought to be the consensus number one overall pick, you might. Right? I think, like, all you can do with Caleb right now is knock him down. Yeah. So I think that's why you're starting to hear those questions. And when you talk about Washington's situation, if they were able to do it, having Cliff Kingsbury there and his history, not just with Caleb Williams, but with other mobile quarterbacks that may have needed to iron out some of the stuff that Mike T is talking about, you know, and, and, and helping Kyler Murray transition to the NFL where he's been a good player. So I, I think there's a lot to be said for that situation for Caleb Williams. I, I just think it's a pipe dream because I think the Bears are going to take it. Yeah, yeah well, what would the Bears give that pickup for? They have two picks in the top ten. Right. Like, we're, we're, we're in the building process now. It's time for Matt Everflus to win. 
Right. He's not going to give up a talent like that, and then maybe not one that's supposed to be generational. Right. We talked about it the, this morning. You know, Carolina, we'll see what happens with Bryce Young, but the other thing that happened in that building every week was, oh, my God, look how good C.J. Stroud is. Chicago does not want to see Caleb Williams go to another team right. and be like, wow, look how good he is. The, the, the similar situation in the NBA, if you recall, remember Philadelphia 76ers traded up to get Markel Fultz with the number one pick, and they could have just held the pick and drafted Jason Tatum. Yeah. I don't know if this right. is that situation, <laughs> right. but I'm just saying. And, and now the Philadelphia 76ers fan base has to watch Jason Tatum torch them for like the next, you know, 15 yeah. years. Welcome back to Get Up. The Chiefs, of course, Super Bowl victory put us closer to the new NFL season. So, Dan, let's look ahead next season. Overreaction Friday. Dan, what if I told you C.J. Stroud will win MVP next year. Is that an overreaction? Oh, no, I don't think it's an overreaction. I think he'll be in the mix. I mean, I, I think, look, we've seen quarterbacks in their second year take big jumps, even after they didn't have the kind of year uh, he had as a rookie. I also think Houston is in this phase right now, like the Bengals were in, heading into Joe Burrow's second year, where they have cap space and they have a young, good young quarterback on a rookie contract. I think they're going to try and maximize that. I think they'll probably hit free agency hard, and I think he'll be in a position to be the quarterback of a very good team next year, which always puts you in the MVP mix. Bart, what do you think? Listen, you talk about you know what they did overseeing uh, expectations, even with the late injury. You know, Nico Collins is an outbreak uh, breakout candidate. He's poised. He's lived up to the expectation, exceed the expectation. He's playing with that chip on the shoulder, and they got plenty of salary cap space to improve this roster. They had a lot of one-year guys, a lot of retreads like Sheldon Rankins. They can go big fish hunting now, and now people are going to want to come to Houston because now it's proved that it's not a dysfunctional place that we thought before C.J. Stroud got there. Okay, next up, the Bucks must re-sign Baker Mayfield. Yeah. And is that an overreaction? Yeah. Yes. Now, I don't. I think they, they can re-sign him, and that would be a fine move. But I don't know about must. I think if the deal is there and it's right, it makes sense for them to bring him back. But I think they should look at all of their options. You know, Mayfield was kind of a flyer for them last year, and it worked out. Uh, he's the proof that you don't necessarily need to overcommit at the position if you trust your coaching. Uh, I, I think, again, if it makes sense and it's there, I could see him back in Tampa. I don't think it's essential. I think there are other options for them if he were to make it difficult. Our resident GM, Mike T. Yeah, I disagree. He was a great story. This was his fourth team, Carolina Rams, and obviously Cleveland resurrected his career right. with Todd Bowles coaching a really underrated and pretty good defense. They can make some noise in the NFC South next year. If I'm Baker Mayfield, I found a home. Sign a three to five year year deal, and that's your new home. And go make a run with the Buccaneers. Okay, it, if you understand, if he change, un that doesn't matter at all. They if were he, together in the Rams. Liam yeah, Cohen. Right. Well, if he understands who he is, he right? He has to understand. Like, listen, we love Baker Mayfield at a certain price because it allows you to bring back guys like Devin White. You got it. You got it. He has to understand who he is. Understand he doesn't have too many opportunities out there. Finally, what if I said the Rams are the biggest challenge to the 49ers in the NFC? Is that an overreaction? I don't think it is. I think the Rams are right there in their division. They made the playoffs this year in what by rights should have been a rebuilding season. They carried more than $70 million in dead salary cap money this year, and all that is gone. They have the ability to hit free agency. They have a first-round draft pick for the first time in eight years. I think the Rams are positioned to, to rebuild quickly. They already made the playoffs in a year where they were supposed to be down. I think they're positioned to make life difficult on the 49ers in their own division next season. Now, listen, I, I know if Dan O was here, he, he always believes in Matt Stafford. And people, people they're, 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 that's probably where he is right now. <laughs> yeah, the, and Puka Nakua yeah. was phenomenal. But Aaron Donald was not as dominant as we've wow. seen in the past here. Oh, well, we believe in the Rams. Well, well that's tough to say because I, I forget the guy, uh, the, the kid that they drafted right next to him. He was able to eat off of the fact that Kobe Aaron Turner. Donald, yeah, Kobe Turner, because Aaron, you know, because Aaron Donald garnered so much attention that he was able to get nine sacks. So you still got your interior linemen, your sack numbers are still up there. And listen, everybody has a down year at times, right? And you know, I'm sure Aaron Donald understands that he'll go back to do what he do, does in the offseason, be prepared. But with a run game and the, the ability to put points up like that, that's going to allow Aaron Donald to be able to have teams in, you know. Um, predictable down and distances, which is going to allow that defense to eat and be better. And they have plenty of money, $35 million underneath the salary cap to be able to go spending. I think it's a very attractive destination for Sean McVay. You see our picks there when we talk about the biggest challenges to the night. You got the Packers. Guys, this is easy. Uh, as Darius okay. reminded me, they have top six receivers were all 25 years old 
or younger. This is the youngest team in the NFL. This is like buying NVIDIA two years ago. This is a, <laughs> Did you guys watch the playoff game? The difference between the Packers and the 49ers wasn't that big. They are coming. Jordan Love is younger than Lamar Jackson. They have such a ceiling. I think the Packers over the next three to four years, as this nucleus just keeps developing, I think they're going to be hard to beat. Well, they got challenges within their own division. So let's see how that how that pans out. And let's see. Niners. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. saying, but let's let's see if they let's see if they have, you know, if they're going to be able to put it back now that people expect them to be good and going to prepare for them. By the way, I'm going opposite. I'm doing Seinfeld opposite because I always go Dallas. But you know what? I'm going with the Lions. Yeah. What up, though? <laughs> what up, though? The Lions. 3-1-3? 3-1-3. Yeah. 30 years was enough. Yeah, 30 years <laughs> of losing is enough. <laughs>